Hey guys, Rachel here, and welcome to episode one of my new vlog series for the Punk Lounge, Rachel Plus One. What that basically is, is I'm going to take you guys with me beyond the stage, behind the scenes, to hang out with punk musicians while they do what they do when they're not playing their music. Whether it's fashion, cooking, travel, the stuff they're passionate about, the stuff they're interested in. Hopefully it'll be fun, maybe we'll actually learn something, have some adventures, and we're already late, so I'm going to get going. Ollie will hit you guys up when we get to our first location. Bye. <laughs> Hi Rachel, are you here for the punk rock tea party? I am! Come on in! Hey, who's this guy? That's Killer. Hey Killer! You don't look like you kill much. Welcome. Hey guys! So I'm here now, finally got here, um, and I'm gonna learn about some tea with you. So we're gonna go into the kitchen and I'm gonna learn about loose leaf tea. Absolutely. All the tea. Oh my All God. the tea. All the tea. We're gonna spill All the, the tea. All the tea in China. <laughs> well, you made a whole spread, dude. That's what I do, man. So, how did how did you get so into tea? I wasn't even a big tea drinker. Um, I think I had a sore throat or something, and uh, Susan actually said something. You should make some tea with some honey and lemon in it. This is David's tea, right? Yes. That's what made me. Let's look at this. This is birthday cake, cotton candy. That's so, amazing. A tea is probably the oldest drink. Story is that the a emperor uh, had some uh, leaves fall in his uh, hot water that he was drinking, and uh, that's how uh, the idea of tea came out. I like to get all different types. Chinese tea, like uh, this is what they call pour air. Uh, it's very earthy and Assam from India. A, this is what they uh, call orange pico, but it has no orange flavor in it. It actually relates to the size of the leaf and the, the way that the leaf is cut. But this is what uh, a lot of people make uh, iced tea with uh, because it's kind of uh, neutral, but uh, has a nice sort of astringency, you know. Uh, Nogiri, which is a, a, an Indian tea. So green teas, like they're uh, uh, popular in uh, Japan. Japan what is where you get most of your green teas. Um, uh, the other popular drink now coming out of Japan is what they call matcha. And it's almost like, a, it's really grassy. It's a really kind of grassy flavor on a tea. Uh, it's more like a powder. They, these are called jasmine pearls and you can see that they look like little pearls but when you actually uh, steep them in water they turn out to be a full tea leaf it's very floral it's kind of a jasmine flavor this is Earl Grey I think that's probably one of the most popular uh, it's a black tea um, is what they call lapsang a souchong dry it and uh, put it over uh, burning pine embers. So it's like a smoked kind of a tea. P people like who like scotch um, because it has that kind of uh, smoky flavor. Some people say it smells like band-aids. So. <laughs> oh, can we try that today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The way of making it, uh, like I said, is, uh, if you have a strainer or an infuser here, uh, something like that, you, 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 you get your little scoops and uh, uh, just steep the tea um, for uh, two, three minutes and uh, it's ready to go. What are we going to try today? Whatever anybody wants. I, nice. You could try a cup of that and then try a cup of something else and uh, that's why it's a tea party. And we'll so let's go join everybody next door and we will um, have some tea and some little treats and Absolutely. we'll chit chat about punk rock. Just let you know, th these are the, just like a um, tomato and cream cheese, like a vegetarian. Uh, these are uh, chicken salad and sprouts. Um, mm. Uh, I think these are vegetarian too. That's just a, a cream cheese and, and, and sprouts. And this is like a ham, a deviled ham uh, with cream cheese and that's just plain uh, chicken salad. So 
and there's scones and uh, this skull is skull cakes. Skull cakes, right? Um, there's uh, fig jam, strawberry jam. Um, we have Linzer torts. What are they? Kiffles. Right. Apricot, apricot kiffles. kiffles. They're like mm. pie crust and apricot. They're, oh, <laughs> they're wow. really awesome. So uh, enjoy. Uh, we also have very uh, colorful uh, sugar. Some here. I will bring the sweetener. Bad religion. Recipe for eight. Look. I got against the grain. Just in the water up right here. The tea is served. Mm -hmm. um, Lindsay, you made an amazing spread. Sandwiches, tea, all these amazing things. Um, I have a little cream cheese and sprout that I'm gonna bite into in a minute. But um, we have some friends with us. Um, you guys all introduce yourself. We have Pat, my <laughs> long-suffering husband. Um, I'm Susan. I live here with Lindsay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim. Mm -hmm. Michelle. Mm -hmm. So you guys have all played in Philly punk rock bands for quite some time. Killer. <laughs> Has Killer been in a punk rock band? Tell me a little bit about just the music you guys do. Yeah, Lindsay and I are in a band together and uh, um, we play uh, Christmas punk. So we take famous punk songs and rewrite the lyrics um, and make them into Christmas songs. A Blitz song, right? And instead of razors in the night, it's reindeer in the mm -hmm. night. And what do you guys call this crazy Christmas uh, punk rock band? Well, it's the, the Mistletoads, and uh, the funny thing is we're not the only band, punk band that does this. There's uh, another one uh, that we're good friends with in Vancouver called the Angry Snowmen. Nice. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting that um, we have this sort of disease and sort of way <laughs> of uh, turning punk songs into Christmas songs. Hey. I'm, I'm waiting for them to go to Vancouver so I can go along and see some hockey games. Lind Lindsay's played in uh, a lot of other bands. He goes way, way back in uh, Philly punk history. Right. What other bands have you been in? Uh, my, my first band was called the Pleasure Dots. And we were playing the Hot Club like in 1970. I think the first time we played was 77. We're a, a three-piece, all original, but it was more new wave. Yeah, he opened up for a couple famous bands. Uh, Brian Setzer, when mm -hmm. he was in the Blood of the Sparrows. Oh, uh, wow. was his first band before he went before to... Before the Stray Cat. I've been playing in bands for probably about 35 years. Lindsay, you still mentioned some of the old clubs you used to play at. Um, most of the people... Well, the Punk Lounge is based out of England, so mm -hmm. American Punk, Philly Punk in particular, might be something new for the people that are watching. What was the scene in Philly back, what was that, like 78, 79, what year are we talking? Oh yeah, um, I, I was still in uh, school, I graduated in 79, and uh, the band moved from York because we were a new wave band. Um, I had like Billy Idol bleached blonde hair, you know, in 1979. Whoa, whoa, whoa that's news, you had hair? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was great. I mean, even in from the seventies to eighties, like South Street, you know, you had the hot club, and, and it was really um, a shame, you know, gentrification, and they were blitzing all those neighbors neighborhoods up at Twenty First and South. And uh, so, basically, for someone that doesn't know South Street back then, it would be like what New York had St. Mark's Place, okay. London, maybe you compare the King's Road. That was where all the mm -hmm. punks just right. congregated and, and shopped. That's where and, all the, and that's where uh, Zipperhead was down there. All the, but Scandalous. all the clubs, uh, um, all, all, the, all the clubs, um, uh, Dobbs, uh, the Ripley, Bigelow's, all the, and, and you could play seven nights a week to a full wow. bar. That was the, I don't know who worked and who didn't, <laughs> but it was, a, it was a great time. Like, what was one of the bands that you still remember seeing back there that's like burnt in your brain? Robert Hazard and the Heroes. Um, I, I saw the B-52s wow. at the High Club um, when they were pretty much nobody. Um, 
And Robert Hazard, a lot of people don't know him, but they would know his songs because he, he wrote a lot of famous stuff that kind of right. went, went Girls on him. Just, just want to have fun and escalator of life. And uh, we actually had a bill with him at, at the Hot Club. He was just starting out. We were just starting out. He was a great guy. The Hooters, uh, they, they were a big uh, Philly band back in the day. And the A's. Right, the A's. And, you know, uh, Richard Bush is still playing with a good friend of mine. He's a bass player, Roy Fisher. Um, played in, uh, they're the Peace Creeps now. So it's interesting that it, it kind of keeps rolling, you know. It was, it, was a, it was a great time. It was a great time. So, Lindsay, it's really been great chatting with you today. I'm going to dig into some of these cakes now. But your yeah. house is amazing. Thank you. Your decor, I don't know who's, I don't know if it's you or Susan that I can give credit to that for. <laughs> in this, like, this tiny sex shop that I'm going to have to put some, like, proper footage of in. So I know we were here for the tea party, but something caught my eye in the corner of the room, and I, I couldn't leave before I found out more about it. So this is, just for scale, Susan, what the hell is this? So I became very interested in miniatures and just about any scene you can imagine, you can recreate it in miniature. So this is just one of many that I have. But when I was looking through some old pictures of Vivian Westwood's sex shop on King's Road, I thought it would be fun to recreate it in miniature. So we can go inside. <laughs> the little door opens. This is freaking crazy. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I can actually remove the front for better access so we can take a look at it. Doesn't it just make you want to shrink down and walk inside and shop? This is like my Barbie dreams, but like a cool grown-up <laughs> punk version. So there's Vivian inside there, and you can see the, the jukebox that would have been in the old store is there. I tried to recreate the look of the old, uh, some of the displays with the curtain behind it. This is, how did you find all, like, where does one find a miniature jukebox? Like, this is... You, you would be surprised what a big business miniatures are. And like There's the, the sex... entire websites for selling miniatures. Oh, I mean, that sex thing, did you make that I yourself? I made the, the, the bag, And then yes. it's just, it's incredible because anyone that's a fan of this stuff knows that like... I made this little leather vest that says sex on it. That is insane. <laughs> How I'm about just... the bondage gear? Right, yep, yes. Here's a little straight that? jacket. I did not, no. Oh, you mean that's available for that purchase? That is available for purchase. <laughs> oh, you just sort of pull everything together <laughs> into the can. scene the way you want it. <laughs> there used to be, I don't know if you went on it, but there used to be a website, Only Anarchists Are Pretty, where they had all, like, just old pictures, and it was, like, a great resource if you love this sort of thing. I do. I love it. And then, well, I met Jordan at, um, at the 100 Club. I think what ago. I really need in here is a miniature Jordan. You do need a miniature Jordan. I'm going to get to work on that. You need her behind the counter looking very surly and telling that boy what to wear. <laughs> <laughs> but this is amazing. But I just, I could not leave until I got just some of this because I think people on the punk lounge would really enjoy this. It's really freaking neat. I hope they like it. Well, thank you for sharing your miniatures with us. <laughs> I'm glad that everybody joined me today. This again is um, Rachel Plus One on the Punk Lounge. We're here with our friends and with Lindsay, who is Mr. Punk Rocker, who also knows a lot about tea. So I'm going <laughs> to eat a skull cake now, and um, I will catch you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. And these are our fun thing to take home, oh, bad religion cookies. The detail is crazy on these. <laughs>